<coughs> Thank you very much. So uh, while we're closing gaps in the exploration of heat tops, which is a very good development because they're still very difficult to explore, we'd like to add another type of site in the mountains to the discussion, a type of site that has not been discussed much for bronze and iron, air, iron age archaeology, which are the caves, uh, of which there are I mean, many in, all over the Balkans. But in this project too, actually, it started with a German-Albanian uh, cooperation on Paleolithic and Mesolithic archaeology. So uh, Thomas Haug from the University of Cologne and uh, Professor Richter, but also Ludens Ruka, who is also at the Institute of Archaeology in Tirana, uh, uh, which is represented by Ilir Gibali. They, they wanted actually to explore the, the Paleolithic in Albania, and they have chosen several caves to explore, and I will come back to this. So we actually joined in later to study then the overlaying the Bronze Age and the early Iron Age finds, which clearly show that those caves have been used much later as well, and not just by hunter-gatherers of the Paleolithic and Mesolithic period. So the three caves we want to present today, but this is really preliminary results from the pottery studies that have now to be integrated into the uh, further exploration and all the other types of finds, uh, are located in the, in the Mati district, a bit further north uh, from Tirana, like a two hours drive, as is a mountainous region near the town of Burel in uh, northern Albania. Albania generally is a country that, uh, of course, I mean, by force, all ar archaeology in Albania is mountain archaeology, although uh, the projects often do not concentrate on a, on a, a specific theoretical framework or, or discussion related to mountain archaeology, but Albania is really uh, dominated by all these uh, Western Balkan countries, by those uh, north-south uh, mountain ranges. And you can see they really reach to the coast and a uh, good part of the Albanian coast is actually uh, inaccessible completely. So just to give you a few ideas, so this is uh, from the road that leads from the south to Tirana, so you can see how the most part of the country uh, is. And just at the horizon, you would see the Adriatic Sea or then between the mountains, some of those uh, inland uh, highland plains, according to uh, the typology of uh, Maria Ivanova from the beginning. So this is in the southeast of Albania, as you can see some upland highland plains, at about 800 meters above sea level, connected also to marshy areas and lakes, and actually behind you then see the borders of Greece. Uh, but in the north, it's a bit more rough, as you can see the, uh, the lake areas at the borders to one towards Montenegro and Kosovo. Kosovo. But between all those mountains, you have the river valleys, which uh, make, of course, the connections and uh, a good fertile land and where we would find a lot of occupation, but which are also difficult to explore because of I mean, erosion layers from the mountains covering uh, older sites. But uh, these river valleys are, of course, the connections between the different parts of the, the southwestern Balkans and, and in Albania, used from prehistory, as we will see, uh, but also, I mean, in this region that's now leading from Elbasan down, down towards uh, Ohrid and the uh, southeast of Albania, was used by the Via Ignatia by the Romans and last also by uh, several nice uh, Ottoman bridges. So leading down towards the re region, which was actually our point of entry to Albania for Maya and myself, uh, the excavation, the French uh, Albanian excavation in Sovian, a wetland site. Uh, Maya, as you already told, uh, uh, she already uh, told you about some details, so we'll not go uh, more into this. I um, mean, a multi-layered site uh, with a Neolithic to early Iron Age layers in this highland plain, about 800 meters, as I said, above sea level. A plain that we explored uh, after 2007, when the excavation has been completed, or at least uh, stopped for the moment, uh, with an intensive survey of all the plain, which has been, which is actually a drained marshy lake. And in the last years, and this will be more interesting than for the mountain archaeology, but I will not yet present the results, um, because this is really ongoing. It was this summer as well, the exploration now of all the hilltop sites and slopes around the plain. And there is dozens of hill forts that are known since many decades, but that have never been um, explored in detail. And uh, for many, there is no dating pottery so far. And I think we can now add in the next years dates to many of those sites. So the plain, again, about 800 meters above sea level, this is really mountain archaeology. And actually, there is many projects around in this area uh, 
which is the focus of Albanian uh, prehistoric archaeology. So as you see at the corner of the three countries, and it's not that oil is secluded or remote area. Um, there is uh, projects working on the very early, earliest Neolithic uh, cultures, like uh, an American Albanian corporation in Vashtemi that completed now excavation, but also in very diverse environments. All these, again, high up in the mountains, even archaeology of islands, which has a Bronze Age occupation, uh, explored by a Greek Albanian team in the Prespa Lake, or then now new explorations started by the University of Bern with a near sea grant uh, in the Lake Ohrid in northern Macedonia, where we have pile dwellings, as we know, well, from Switzerland. Um, but we always should also add uh, northern Greece, I think, to Balkan archaeology. Uh, there is uh, uh, more activity now recently, and there is also Bronze Age sites appearing high up in the mountains, like in the Sam Samarina area. Um, again, these are more the Paleolithic archaeologists exploring this area, but of course they find much uh, more recent uh, finds as well. Um, so like 1,750 meters above sea level, which is also one of the I mean, highest located villages of modern Greece, with a pottery that is very close to what we find in the middle to late Bronze Age layers in Sovyan, across the borders. And uh, Ilya Cipalli also, who is one of the co-authors of this paper from the uh, Institute of Archaeology at Irana, he also did uh, recently a lot of exploration of hilltop sites in the region called Chaonia, in the very southwest of Albania, where we have also along the Ionian and Adriatic coast many of the hilltop sites, which is not um, much surprising when you see what's going on a bit further north, as we have seen today. But also in the very north of uh, Albania, there is uh, projects in, in the mountain valleys. There was an American-Albanian corporation, the Shala Valley, which has been fully published now, mm. which is one of the really remote areas of Albania that were remote actually up to modern days. And so there was a lot of ethnological uh, exploration as well, uh, together with archaeology. And I think it took actually, after all, the, the bigger part of the project. But they did uh, test excavations on different sites partially also of the early Iron Age, just to quote one example of the site of Gurunas, which is also part of the publication of this project. But having arrived now in northern Albania, take one step again a bit further south to the Burel region, so explored by the German uh, Albanian Paleolithic project, which focused not only on this area, but also on other caves in Albania. Just to show one of the examples, the rock shelter, which is close to the coast, uh, in Kanali, and uh, there too, of course, overlaying there was uh, quite a good amount of uh, Bronze Age material, which compares well to what we know from the settlement sites inland and on the coast. And this was the same thing what they then um, found in the caves, so in the Blasi, Neziri and Kaputa caves in this uh, uh, mud district near to Burel. Just uh, to show one of the examples, they're actually quite uh, deep, those caves. Some were probably connected, uh, so they're really close together, actually. And uh, so overlaying those layers with the Paleolithic finds and the Mesolithic finds, uh, there was also several meters in one of the caves, at least, of Bronze Age material. As you can see, these caves are located a bit more than 300 meters above sea level, overlooking, again, one of those uh, plateaus or inland uh, river plains that are known well known from archaeology, but we actually do not know about other settlements, but we know about more than a dozen of tumuli that have been uh, excavated and published in detail, tumuli from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. But what we were focusing on in four study seasons from 2015 to 17 was the pottery now from the new excavation campaign, so of the uppermost layers in those three caves and comparing it also to the earlier material from the 1950s, uh, late 70s and 80s, from the caves that have been already published in preliminary results in Illyria. Um, so the, the early Bronze Age, just to give you a short overview of what we encountered, has been represented mainly in the Blasi cave, although there is the reference stratigraphy actually for Northern Albania and Naziri, and with some, bronze, uh, I mean, some early Bronze Age material too. And uh, now we can date, and this was one of the more important impacts of the new project, now to date all those stratigraphies that have already been excavated in the 80s. Um, we can um, date this layer, uh, this early Bronze Age layer in the Blasi cave to the 
actually the, the later part of the early Bronze Age to about 2300-2150 BC. Uh, interestingly, uh, Maya, she identified several of the uh, uh, Cetina type shirts which compare well to what we know from, a, for example, a Raflica Pe Pecina in, in the Bosnia-Herzegovina site that is uh, very famous for its nice um, Cetina type pottery. So actually this uh, Cetina material reached also quite inland and upland, again, according to uh, Maria's uh, typology of, uh, of mountain regions. Um, this can be compared, as I said, also to a layer, to one of the layers in the reference stratigraphy of the Naziri cave and has been linked also to the stratigraphies of Malic, close to Sovian in the southeast of Albania. But we, we have some doubts if these uh, uh, synchronisms actually work out. I mean, the connections, as we can see in the material, are much more towards the north than towards the south, at least for the early Bronze Age. And interestingly, there is also one fragment of uh, uh, some kind of figurine which might also indicate some other types of use of the caves. I mean, we talk about periods when we know much more, I mean, when uh, open settlements are much more common than the use of caves. But again, this might also be part of the uh, research which didn't at all focus on the caves. For the Middle Bronze Age, um, there is also a layer in the Blasi cave and in the Naziri caves, but this is a period that's really what much less know, well known in, in Albania than what we had just heard about this uh, beautiful material from Dalmatia and uh, further north in the Balkans. In Albania, this period can almost not be recognized because we still do not really know about typology and how to recognize this material. But still, we can do some synchronism between the caves and our uh, stratigraphies from Sovian. And there is some technological synchronisms that appear at the same period of time. I mean, in pottery uh, technology, like this method of attaching the handles that uh, uh, show that there is clear also communication between the north and the south of Albania. The, the late Bronze Age then is much better known, it has also been already published in parts and has very typical material that is almost the same what we then would find in Sovian and Malic in the southeast of Albania. And you see here one of the pictures of this very deep stratigraphy inside the cave of Neziri and uh, one of the really great um, new results of the project is to, to go like half a meter behind the stratigraphy and take now radiocarbon samples to really date what has been done in the late 70s and early 80s. But it also shows the problem of the Paleolithic archaeologists because they have to dig through all this in order to reach their Epigravetian uh, uh, stones. Um, the Late Bronze Age is also the period when these tumuli have been created. Uh, some of the material is definitely of a Late uh, Bronze Age typology. And interestingly, there is also some of those, I mean, so many times quoted the Mycenaean types, uh, uh, type swords and knives that have been found even up here, quite far in the north, uh, in inland areas, which therefore were not that remote. Um, one map of these Mycenaean imports, uh, with, especially with the metal finds, I mean, okay, there can be added many more sites since 2002, but it clearly shows how the, all these finds, they, they reached the inland, uh, areas of the southwestern Balkans along those river valleys, which was also the same uh, case for the Mud district. So the uppermost layer we found in the caves, um, and you can see it's really the uppermost layers. The pottery was on the floor covered by stalagmite material up to one millimeter thick, sometimes really hard then to identify pottery, was uh, early Iron Age. And it's, um, it's actually almost only those uh, fragments of uh, these so-called turban dishes uh, which are well known, I mean, from the south and the western parts and even central parts of the Balkans. It's a bit difficult to, to really understand the interior of the cave because this material has already been collected some in the 50s, again in the 70s, 80s, and then in the 2010 years. And um, they, they actually join together. And we get the impression it was really a spread of several bowls that have been broken in place, several dozen of bones, uh, bowls that have been broken inside the caves for uh, during some sporadic use. So some uh, uh, further drawings of this uh, material, very typical. And there's almost nothing else for the early Iron Age. So people were sporadically visiting those caves, but certainly not dwelling inside. But we do not know where the settlements themselves should be located in the valley. Um, then at some point, like seventh, uh, maybe 
sixth century at the very latest that the use of those caves will stop and there is just very sporadic use with some um, um, medieval and Ottoman material also found inside and there's actually a castle a very badly preserved that was built on the rock on top of the caves while the tumuli as obviously as you can see go on up to at least to the archaic period and that's with some very nice assemblages of, uh, of, um, of uh, jewelry now, this is not the only cave, but uh, I think there has to be done much more systematic work on linking all those caves in Albania, but in a larger region as well. Uh, just to, to quote uh, two examples, one is the Himara cave on the coast uh, that has been used also during almost all of prehistory and as late as the late Bronze Age and in the early Iron Age and up to the 5th century BC, uh, in a period when there was already the, the Greek uh, colonies, uh, the Greek site established just beside the cave, so it was certainly not a place of, uh, of dwelling, just with a view inside. And actually in the, in the Korcha region where we were uh, working for many years, there is also one of the caves that has a, a lot of material of the early Iron Age and the site is just located on top of the rock. But people are still continuing to use the cave and there is even uh, um, cooking pots inside the cave that have been used. So uh, there is still certainly a lot of uh, work to be done and we have to integrate the study of the pottery with the rest of the material from those caves. But it looks like we have maybe in the earlier phase, we have a more um, complete assemblage of pottery, but still there are some shapes, just to quote one example, sticking out for maybe some ritual use, at least for the very latest phases in the early Iron Age. It looks that we have a more special use and not any more sediment, and that these caves definitely were uh, linked to further away regions, I mean, not the caves themselves, but the whole area of the mud district at 300 meters above sea level uh, in the mountains. Thank you very much.